Okay, this is the diopterin. The diopterin in this case is actually attached via an upright leg. That upright leg allows us with a slot to identify angle. We can go ahead and adjust and measure for angle. This one is set up so that in addition to the tripod, which is not quite working as well as it should have, the pins for it aren't working out as well as they would, I would like, uh, can be removed and it can be stabbed directly into the ground. The individual device of the diopteron is, as with many Roman devices, set so you can tear them down and use them individually. Okay. And in this case, we have a siding tube that I can look directly down. I have a hair's line, in other words, uh, the equivalent of a gun's iron sights, um, inside to be able to go ahead and determine exactly what I'm looking at. If I'm dialing in a particular direction, in this case, this particular wheel is set up with the Zodiac, so we can go ahead and tell that this is a 30 degree section wheel, and there are subdivisions of that section wheel, so we can dial it in for a known position. We can dial in the lines, and then turn it to meet whatever we want to aim for and determine the angle to. We can determine the angle thanks to these 10 degree divisions. The standard degree divisions uh, were actually developed long before the Romans. And to the extent that they were capable of producing these divisions, they were able to go ahead and create multiple different wheels, multiple different diopterous panes that actually are useful for different purposes. Clock face would give us a subdivisions of 12 as well, effectively similar to that. This one, however, is kind of interesting. This one, specifically, is set up to be lined. These names are the names of the different winds and the wind directions that normally happen. Uh, it's keyed to Rome, and in a particular location you might need to modify the uh, keying, but these wind names would tell us something about being able to go ahead and say, okay, during these seasons, this a street that's laid out, or a open lane that's laid out, or even an edge of a encampment that's laid out along this way is gonna get blasted by the wind. We would know ahead of time what season we'd have to be worried about. And if we know that, then if we're doing a marching camp, we can say, oh, wind's gonna come in from over there. We've dialed it in already to figure out which direction we're looking. So it's time to make certain to build the camp so that we're not putting a whole mess of people into freezing wind. Uh, relatively useful. And also in the long term, if you're building a city and you're laying down streets, you want there to be enough wind protection so that you don't have everything on the street being blown everywhere, which includes all of the filth that uh, might be tossed out into the street. So it's an issue. Finally, this last one is actually a measurement dial. And this measurement dial actually allows us to take a look at different horizon lines given different locations around the Roman Empire. So we can dial it in for where the horizon line should be and be able to identify, okay, there's the horizon line, we know we're at that location, which can give us some information about timing and give us some information about um, data and how far we've traveled between one camp and the next how close we are to this next location. So if we're doing a long march,